Hi guys. Okay, as promised, I wanted to go over some of the things that I got from the Amish store that I go to. So it's a bulk food store. So as the name implies, you just buy things in bulk. So one thing that I get there because the price is just so good compared compared to uh, going to the grocery store and buying a little bottle is ground cinnamon. So this is uh, relatively, this is, she has written on here eight ounces of ground cinnamon and it was four dollars and thirty cents and a lot of these things are name brand and um, I don't know how they get it they get it in bulk from their supplier and then they just package it up and it really does save a ton of money here is something else okay so I got natural cocoa powder one pound was three dollars and fifty five cents this is just your average run in the mill cocoa powder, but then I saw this. This is also a pound of dark cocoa powder. So I can't wait to try some brownies or something with this because I love dark chocolate. This was a pound for $4.10. Not sure if I've seen dark cocoa powder at the grocery store before. If I have, I haven't paid attention. But when I saw that in the clear plastic bag, I was like, whoa, gotta have it. Okay, something else I got was five pounds of brown sugar. Now this has, it, it says Domino in parentheses, so you know that that's um, what brand it is. And this whole whole pound was only $5.50. You know, those little bags you get at the grocery store, they used to be a dollar, I don't even think they are anymore. So I felt like this was a good deal. Uh, I will show you the big things here in a second, but I saw this. I love to get maple syrup. I'm all out of the maple syrup that we made. So I grabbed this when I was there. This is from Siegel PA, which isn't that far away. So it's local. Uh, it's 100% pure maple syrup. And it was only $4.50, which you can't even get it at Aldi for that, that price. And it's in a glass bottle, which I will keep and reuse. So that's wonderful. Some other staples. This is the little hand hand rag. They're a dollar up there. I always get these, you know, to wash dishes with and everything. They're my favorite. So when I'm up there, I snag one because it's a dollar. And then I'll just pitch it in the drawer and add to my collection. Next thing I got, $3.75. I don't know if it's a good great deal or not, but it is better than just ordering from Amazon. So these are 8 by 3 um, Poly gusset bags. There's a hundred bags in here for three bucks, so I feel like that's probably a good deal. This is what I'll put bread in when I sell it. I'll throw my loaves of bread in here. Nice clear bags. You can't go wrong with that. Canning season is upon us. I am out of lids, uh, flats for my jars, so I'm going to start grabbing these every time I go up there. There are 60 lids in here, 60 flats, which I'll go through in no time, so I'll just have to keep buying them. But um, these were eleven eighty five. Now these are superb lids, and if you've never seen them, they have a blue gasket. They're actually made in Ohio. Next time I go out to Layman's, or you know, if I have a day, I'd like to actually go see their factory because they are pretty awesome, and they are really proud of their product. And I think it is a superior canning flat. To be honest with you, I I don't have very many issues with sealing, so. Yeah, probably made in the USA. We like that. Better than ordering from Amazon. I will tell you about buying flats from Amazon. I've done it. I've lost quite a few jars because they don't seal properly. They'll seem like they sealed. It's like an artificial seal. And then you'll find later that they, they haven't sealed and you've lost that product. So go with a good, good brand. Okay, here's, here's the reason I really go up there, okay? And I don't know if the prices are on here, but I remember roughly what they are. I got 25 pound bag of sugar. I do a lot of baking. I go through a lot of sugar and a lot of flour. So I got this, it's Domino. I mean, it is just white sugar. They also have, you know, they have succinant and raw sugar up there as well. But for baking purposes, I just go ahead and grab this when I need it. This was 25 pounds and I think it was $25. So it's like a dollar a pound. If you compare this to the grocery store, you're saving money. And as if that wasn't good enough. Oh my 
my bag. Here we go. <laughs> this is my sack of flour. This is a 50 pound bag of flour. This is King Midas. Um, can't remember which one they said it's similar to. King Arthur brand is what this is similar to. It is unbleached. I don't know where it says that at on here, but it is. It's unbleached. I always buy the unbleached one. That's why I like going up there because you can't hardly find unbleached flour at the grocery store. This is unbleached, which is a big difference, and it's definitely preferred. So I go with this when I can get it, um, and it is $19 for 50 pounds. If you look at the price of flour at the grocery store these days, it's mind-boggling. So I love my big bag of flour. We'll see how fast I go through it. Okay. That sums up my Amish grocery haul. That grand total for all of that. And, and these, you know, put up the price. The big bags of everything put up the price. I think it was 75 No. No, I'm sorry. It was $87 for all of this. Which I really don't think is that bad considering it's bulk. If I went to the grocery store and bought the same sizes, the same pounds or whatever quantities of this, I think the price would have been exponentially higher. So I'm pretty happy about it. Plus it's unbleached flour, which makes me really happy. So I'll catch up with you guys later on. Hi guys. It is later in the day and I'm out here in my potager bed. I am working. And yeah, this always bugs me when I videotape this garden because last year I didn't get to paint this side of the house. Still look at that. It'll get painted eventually. I got a few things going on. <laughs> Anyways, I'm out here moving in some mulch. So I have some wood chips that I have let aged. I got them last spring. So that's why they're nice and dark and rich. And I'm just starting to move them in here to define the pathway a little bit more. And hopefully, oh, let me put you down. There we go. Hopefully this will also help remediate some of the weeding situation. I'm putting it down about hmm, two, three inches thick. Don't want to go too, too thick because I don't have a whole lot. I'm going to have to get more. But yeah, I'm just trying to put it down and go around some of my plants. You can actually see some of my plants now. So this is going to really define the space. I just need a lot more, I think. But my hope is, for today anyways, I want to do this section here, I want to do this section over here, and I also want to get that corner and around my Ella campaign. If I have that done, I will at least feel somewhat good about the situation. I'll think, you know, maybe at least the plants that I have will be mulched around. I still have the strawberry patch and my asparagus over there, but I don't really want to do too much with the asparagus because it's now gone to seed and it's fallen over and I'm hoping all of those seeds really settle in that soil there so that I have a better asparagus patch next year. And this is, I planted it last year, so this is technically its second year, but I planted uh, rhizomes or tubers, if you will, and so this is actually its third year. I could have harvested, but I only had a couple, so there was no point in it. We're just going to let that get established, and I'm going to let it drop its seeds, so I really don't want to mess too much over there in that area. Over here, so I do have some cosmos that I want to plant. I have a marigold plant. I have a couple things, some flowers. I think most of that's going to go up here, and I think in this area over here, for this year, I might put some watermelon plants and a couple squash plants, zucchini plants. Last year, uh, we had a problem back in the back with deer and groundhogs. And even though we went through and buried some cinder blocks so that I could put a fence up, I just haven't got that fence put up yet. And I'm thinking about making that area much smaller. I'm also going to build teepees out of sticks. I haven't, I haven't let her know that yet. But I'm going to build teepees out of, um, for the, the squash and watermelon and stuff to kind of like vine up. Should be a super simple project. I just have to find the limbs and the sticks. The limbs? Limbs and sticks. Yeah, I mean, they you want them to be about yay big. And you said the limbs and the sticks. Yeah, I'm going to have to cut some off trees maybe. But I have enough, uh, what are those trees called? 
the word always escapes me. It starts with an S. Sassafras? Nope. We have those two. Sumac. There we go. We have enough sumac trees. Actually, I have a couple here that I will probably use. Those need to come out. Those need to come out. And they're usually straight sticks, and I'm planning on using whoops, using those to create some trellising for free, which I'll make a video about as well. But, you know, you see in the different garden catalogs that you can get the little teepees that sit over. Well, I thought, why couldn't I just make my own out of sticks? Just put it together with some wine or some twine at the top. It'll be nice. And then they'll just grow up instead of out. We'll have little squash trees. Yeah. What's life without whimsy? Anyways, that's my goal for the rest of this bed, I think. I'm not going to fit all of my melon and squash plants in here, but I want to at least do a, at least two of each variety. I think I have enough room for that if I trellis up. And that's really going to help me protect that harvest. I am going to do some back here because we took the tarp off and that soil looks fantastic back there. The rest of that area, I might just let rest and run the chickens through all summer long, back and forth you know, get that soil really well conditioned. So that's where I'm at. That's what I'm doing. I'm gonna put you on a time lapse while I get rid of the rest of that pile right there, <laughs> okay? All right, guys. So I really didn't get all of it done that I wanted to get done tonight, but this gives you an Look idea. That beautiful garden. And the pink house, as it's lovingly referred to, which I love. I will show you, we planted some flowers, so let me turn you around and show you. All right, I did put my three candy roaster squash here. I am planning on building a little teepee trellis for that. Um, there's the asparagus I was telling you about. Strawberry patch is looking good. We have alicamp pane here. I have to finish mulching this area. And I have... Oh, hardly. Showing you the little strawberries. They're not red yet, but they're coming. This area needs to be finished being mulched, but we planted some flowers. We have zinnias right there. There's five of them. And then I have cosmos here. This part was mulched. Cosmos along the back and zinnias across the front. And we did plant, Harley planted some noodle beans on these trellises here. Put some lemon basil in. That's all mulched. And over here we put our one lonely marigold that survived. Oops, let's cover up some of that. There we go. There's lavender and dahlias that I planted last year they came back and one of my peonies I still have another peony over there and one over there but I need to get all that mulched so it's coming along quite nicely and that pretty pink house oh peep that right there we're gonna go take a look at it all right check this bad boy out it doesn't have water in it yet we're pretty excited Cody got this um, at the Mac bid, which is like an online auction. Brand new 22 foot pool, 52 inches tall. So we are going to have quite the fun summer in that. Looking forward to getting the water. We even leveled it. Jeff even came in with the skid steer and leveled it. So this bad boy is going to be legit. It goes Caleb to pull out some of my trees. He has to weave through the maze. A little zig and a little zag. Hi. Woo. Guys, I am sweating. Sorry, Chase, I'll let you in the camera here. I just got done trimming Callie's feet, and it is so humid out here. So I do all my own farrier work on my horses. I um, got tutelage um, education from a couple different farriers. 
that I am friends with. And so I do all my own farrier work. If I have a problem that I need help with, I can pick up the phone and call either of them and I'm sure they would help me out. But uh, I've been able to really manage the horse as well. I can't actually tell you, knock on wood, the last time I've had a lameness issue or like a, a uh, what we call them? Abscess. Thank you. An abscess or anything like that. So I feel very, very lucky. Um, Callie has ring bone, so I trim her. I try to give her a little bit of a heel. A lot of times um, people don't like to leave heels on their horses. They'll take them down, but she's more comfortable if I leave a little bit of a heel. And um, this is the first time I trimmed her where I didn't give her a complete square toe. I usually give her a square toe to give her a nice break over. But this time she's been doing really well, so I kind of left her slightly oval. I guess, I guess oval is more of what she is this time. So we'll see how she does with that. She'll probably be sore for a couple days, but once she starts to grow back in, she'll be just fine. Yeah. But yeah, so it's always, uh, I don't know how full-time farriers do it because my lower back would not be able to withstand. I guess maybe you build up a tolerance. You probably build up a clientele with good chiropractor too. Yeah, probably. <laughs> Anyways, guys, it's been a really, really long day. I'm going to head up to the house and get a shower because I am just yuck. Uh -huh. All right, guys. I hope you had a great day. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Bye.